J-Bone here. J-Bone, as some of you know, along with being a motorsport commentator, I'm also a motorsport racing driver. That is, if you count sim racing as racing, which I do because it's literally in the name, sim racing. So can't argue with that logic. Back when I first began my competitive sim racing journey earlier this year via iRacing, I posted a video titled, I tried competitive sim racing and embarrassed myself. As most people are when they begin their iRacing journey, I wasn't great, but practice makes perfect. And after hours of practice, I somehow got even worse. But after even more practice, I won my first ever competitive sim race. And I can honestly tell you that there may be no better feeling on planet Earth. If you've never given sim racing a try, you are missing out in a big way. And I highly, highly recommend it to anyone who is a motorsport fan. Just expect to be bad at first because literally everyone is, especially me. Jabo. Anyways, I received an email in response to that video from a company I was super familiar with called Moza Racing. Why was I familiar with Moza Racing? Because literally anyone who has ever bought or looked into buying a sim rig knows them to be this almost like mythical legendary company that supposedly sells high quality sim racing equipment for a more affordable price than the competition. That is to say that their sim racing equipment, wheelbases, wheels, pedals, etc., is supposed to be the best bang for your buck. Now, I personally elected to not go with any Mosa Racing gear when purchasing my starter sim rig, because while it is supposed to be a great value for what you're getting, it's still not cheap, as it's literally like high-tech interface hardware. And since I was not sure how much I'd like sim racing because I'd never done it before, I wanted to spend the least amount of money possible for a passable sim rig, which is what I did. That is why I went with the Logitech G29 wheel and pedals and a play seat challenge, which I actually will always recommend as the best budget starter sim rig setup. It's not flashy, definitely not flashy, but it gets the job done just fine. That being said, I always hoped to one day level up my sim rig from the budget starter zone to the swag zone, which brings me back to that email I got from Moza Racing. It was pretty much a best case scenario email. They offered to send me a bunch of sim racing products, and in return, they just wanted me to make a totally honest review video about those products and to do a couple social media posts. Here's why I love this arrangement, okay? It means that Moza Racing stand behind and believe in the quality of their products so much that they will give them to me for free and let me say whatever I want to say about them because they are so certain that what I'm going to say will be positive and beneficial for their company. That's bold and I respect them for it because it means they really stand behind their products and also because it benefits me, J-Bone. To reiterate, Moza did send me a bunch of gear for free, but everything I say about Moza in this video is my 100% honest opinion, because that is what they want me to give. So let's dive into it with the unboxing so I can show you what all they sent me. Keep in mind when I'm talking about all this stuff that I am not a sim racing expert, but I did hit up my race engineer, Ryan, to help me explain some of the technology at play here. That being said, if I get anything wrong, that's 100% on me and not on Ryan, as if that does happen, I definitely just like misunderstood him because he's an expert and I'm a noob. First up, Moza Racing sent me their R9 direct drive wheelbase. This should be a massive update on my current setup, okay? Like I said, I've been sim racing with a Logitech G29, which is a combined wheel and wheelbase that is not direct drive. If I understand correctly, with the Logitech G29, when I would turn the wheel, it turned a gear that was attached to the motor. With direct drive, the wheel is directly attached to the motor by sticking right on that pole that sticks out of the wheelbase, so there's supposed to be way more responsiveness in terms of my inputs, as well as in terms of force feedback, which is why every pro sim racer on earth uses a direct drive wheelbase, unless there's like some new technology that's really expensive that I don't know about. If you're totally green to sim racing, like you've never done it, don't know anything about it, force feedback is how the wheel and wheelbase simulate the car interacting with the environment in the game like how the wheel will actually vibrate when your car goes over curbs or the wheel gives you resistance when you're loaded up in a corner. Every decent sim racing wheel has force feedback, but the nicer your equipment, the more feel you have while driving since your force feedback is more accurate and instantaneous. I had literally no clue that force feedback was a thing when I first started sim racing and it is crazy, okay? It really immerses you way more than you think if you're used to playing more like arcadey games with wheels without force feedback, like at like, you know, 
Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. It literally feels like you're driving a car. If you've never used a wheel with force feedback, it is hard to explain. You gotta try it. It is, it is wild. It's awesome. Moser Racing also sent me their SRP pedals, complete with the optional clutch pedal and the SRP performance kit. These are load cell pedals, which again, should be a massive update to my setup. If I understand correctly, my Logitech G29 pedals are potentiometer pedals, which means they register how far in I press the pedals and turn that data into game inputs. Load cell pedals, on the other hand, register how much force is applied to the pedals and turn that data into game inputs, making it way easier to develop muscle memory and be more precise because you're the one in charge, not the pedals. The SRP performance kit is supposed to improve pedal performance, but I actually really liked how these felt out of the box and I wanted to try them stock, so I did not install them. That's maybe something for a future video. Last, but certainly, certainly not least, Moser Racing sent the thing I was looking forward to the most, their KS wheel. This thing is legitimately insane. It looks like a real steering wheel you'd see in a race car. It feels like a real steering wheel you'd see in a race car. And the way that it attaches to the wheelbase is so unbelievably, incredibly satisfying. Check this out. This might be the most high tech feeling piece of hardware I have ever held in my hands. My Logitech G29 was a round GT style steering wheel and my sim racing dream was always to upgrade to a formula style steering wheel. So shout out to Moza for making my dream come true, assuming I like the wheel, which I'll get to later on this video. It then came time to dismantle my old sim rig, which was kind of sad considering all the great memories we made together and the bad memories we made together. But I feel pretty certain that I'm about to be on to bigger and better sim racing things given Moza's reputation. So it's probably for the best. After that, it came time to set up my new gear, and I was really surprised at how easy all of this was to set up and attach to my frame. It feels like a lot of things were very thought out in terms of wire management and ease of build, and it seems like Moza designed their products to work with a lot of different rigs with all the different mounting ports. That being said, I will note that if you're like me and you have a play seat challenge, it's not actually designed to mount the wheelbase and the pedals, it is just designed to mount the wheelbase. And I thought about it and I was like, yeah, that makes sense considering the Playseat Challenge is a budget cockpit. It's like the cheapest cockpit you can buy. And this is not budget hardware. Point being, I had to Jared rig, it's like Jerry rigging, but I'm Jared, the pedals. I stuck like a box underneath the brake pedal and then like a box behind it so I so it didn't go forward. Yeah, it's, it's not great. And it's definitely not a long-term solution, but I'll figure it out. That's maybe again for another video. It then came time to try everything out so that I could experience the difference that supposedly high quality sim racing equipment makes. All right, we are here in the world of iRacing and it is time to try out my Moza equipment. I have my friend, race engineer Ryan, the guy who told me all the stuff that maybe I got wrong, but hopefully I didn't, uh, set me up with all these settings. He went in and really like helped me out a ton, got all my settings right because uh, that is one thing I'll say is like if you're totally new, there's a lot of settings. So you're gonna have to do some research or if you know somebody who can help you out, when you're first setting your wheel up, there's a ton of settings. So we'll say that if you're, if you're pretty new to some racing, definitely gonna have to do some research or again, hit up somebody who can do it for you. Some racers generally are super helpful. So you can probably find somebody who's willing to help you, but it is time to go. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm very excited. I have my force feedback set at 15 because this thing has so much more force feedback and is so much more powerful than my Logitech. Like if you set your force feedback too high is one thing I'll note. I have heard stories of people who go in, their force feedback super high, they crash and their steering wheel turns so hard that they actually like could hurt themselves. So be very careful and always start low with your force feedback and work your way up. 15, I, I've been told is like a good place to start where you're not gonna, you know, you sh not, I shouldn't say not going to, you shouldn't get in too much trouble and uh, you can kind of work up from there if you wanna add more force feedback or take some off. But I'm excited, here we go. And I already feel the little tiny details, like a little bump in the road. It's awesome. You can like really feel it. This has so much more responsivity. Is that a word? Respons responsiveness? It has so much more than my Logitech. I can already tell. Like going over the curb right there. Look at this. Ready? Whoa. You see my hands shaking? There's so much responsiveness here. Oh my gosh. These pedals. The braking is so clean. One thing I didn't like about the Logitech G29 is that after you get like halfway down, there's like a little notch, like a little click to where there's like clearly two different levels of the brake pedal. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is so smooth. 
Okay, I'm gonna go over a curb here so you can see. Ready? Whoa! Oh, see that? Whoa! You see that? How much it's moving? That's not me doing that. That's the game. That's the force feedback. This is crazy. Yeah. So the the pedals are literally so smooth. Like the brake is just a straight shot down. There's no little hitch. You really feel like you can like control it. Okay. Let's do. It. Let's try to do a little a nice lap here. Lime Rock Park in the Formula V. If you're wondering, that's what we're doing. Man, this is. But you feel such tiny little details with this direct drive wheel. It's crazy. Like literally, look, look at the, how these little bumps. You see my hands? They, that's the wheel. These these load cell pedals. Like I thought the direct drive wheel was gonna be the thing that like was the biggest upgrade in my head and made me feel more confident. And it, it's amazing. But the pedals, the upgrade of the pedals, is actually insane. The amount of the ah. Oh! You see, again, you see the, the direct drive, how it, the force feedback is so good on this thing. Anyways, to finally finish that thought that I can't even finish because I'm just so mesmerized by this amazing equipment, the pedals are so responsive. They, they, the way that they move back and forth is so clean, so smooth. You really feel like you can like put your inputs in that you want. And like, I feel like over time, I really would get the muscle memory down for every different type of corner. Like you practice a racetrack enough, I feel like every single time if I did the exact same inputs, I would get the exact same result. Okay, yeah, so honestly, like, I love this equipment. I think all the inputs feel so good and so smooth. The steering wheel, the pedals, the force feedback is unbelievable. I feel such tiny little details. And when you're like getting into corners, when you're going over curves, you just have so much, it makes you feel like you have more control. So man, I, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this, like stop playing this right now so I can go edit the video because the sooner I get the video up, the more I can play this more. So yeah. In conclusion, I highly recommend the Moza Racing R9 Direct Drive Wheelbase, KS Wheel, and SRP pedals to anyone who is looking for high quality immersive sim racing gear at a more affordable price point than their similarly high quality competitors. This stuff is so fun to use and you can truly feel the difference immediately if you come to it from beginner equipment like the Logitech G29 like I did. If you're a true beginner, like you've never even sim raced at all in your life, I'd probably do what I did and start off with a budget setup and then upgrade to Moza because their gear is a decent financial investment that you really want to be sure you're going to make the most of it before you buy all of it. But if money is not an object to you and or you really like to just go all in on things, I see no reason why you shouldn't just start your sim racing journey off with Moza. It will definitely, definitely give you a leg up on all the people in the rookie class in iRacing. I hope you found this video helpful and shout out to Moza Racing for sending me these awesome products to review. Until next time, folks, J-Bomb! J-Bomb!